prayer for peace to Our Lady of Fatima. O Queen of the Rosary, sweet Virgin of Fatima, who has deigned to appear in the land of Portugal, we beg you to watch over our dear homeland and assure its moral and spiritual revival. Bring back peace to all the nations of the world so that all, our own nation in particular, may be happy to call you their queen and the queen of peace. Our Lady of the Rosary, pray for our country. Our Lady of Fatima, obtain for all humanity a lasting peace. Amen. Let us welcome our speaker for this evening, Father Graham Ricketts, who will speak to us on the topic, Pray for Our Priests. Father Graham. I want to describe the occasion of two pastoral visits I have made. The first was to a housebound parishioner of mine who is 101 years old. It was a humbling visit in many ways. It was very clear that she was following Mass online, reading the scriptures every day despite failing vision, and had a lively Catholic faith. The most humbling part was when she told me that she prayed for me every day at a certain time and with a certain prayer. She meant it, and she wanted me to know that I was being protected by her prayer. The second is somewhat different. I was called to the hospital as it was my turn for the on-call pager. It was a winter's evening, dark outside, damp and cold. I still had my coat and scarf on as I walked into the ward and made my way to the dying patient. The ward was full and bustling, nurses, tea trolley and visitors. My entry into the ward was unnoticed except by the nurse from whom I had asked permission to attend. My patient was in a bed by the window. The curtain was already pulled along the length of her bed to give her privacy from her neighbour. We were alone and so I quickly began to prepare to administer the sacrament of the sick and commend her to the Lord. No one could see or hear. I began with the prayers in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. A noise began emanating from the next door bed. At first a groan which became louder. I continued with the scripture reading. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who labour and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. The groan became a growl, louder and louder. People were beginning to take notice. I continued with the laying on of hands, and the growl suddenly stopped, and a voice shouted out, Go away, priest. I carried on. The dying lady opened her eyes and smiled. I anointed her and then commended her to the Lord. Afterwards, curtains still pulled, I left the ward aware that the occupant of the next door bed was staring at me as I walked by. I turned around and looked at her straight in the eyes. She scowled at me and snarled. I gave her a blessing. There was no way that anybody could have known who I was or what I was doing. I am reminded of these words from the letter to the Ephesians. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Now all the baptized are certainly engaged in this spiritual battle, not just priests, but the ministerial priesthood 
shares in the priesthood of Christ in a particular way, not just by degree, and is more closely conformed to him. It is more clear than ever that the spiritual attack that we're presently engaged in is focused upon priests and, as Sister Lucia said, against the family. This is hardly surprising, as most vocations come from Catholic families. And, as the patron saint of parish priests said, a priest goes to heaven or a priest goes to hell with a thousand people behind him, as he is the administer of the Lord's goods. Satan wishes to lead us to hell by leading us away from the sacraments and the grace that comes from them. The priest will suffer many temptations and afflictions, particularly when he is celebrating the sacraments. St. Teresa of Avila once had a vision of two devils wrapped around the neck of a priest while he celebrated Mass. She felt great fear as she saw the demons in the midst of the beauty of the Lord's presence, as well as the state of the priest's soul, which was in mortal sin. She says, The Lord himself told me to pray for him that he had permitted the vision so that I might understand the power of the words of consecration and how God does not fail to be present, however evil the priest who recites them. She continues, I understood well how much more priests were obliged to be good than others, how deplorable a thing it is to receive this most blessed sacrament unworthily. Just as God permitted this dreadful vision for the saint's understanding, the Lord himself permits trials and temptations for us, for our good and the increase of faith. For the priest, this will be a conforming to Christ the high priest and good shepherd. These afflictions do not just come directly from the enemy, but can come also from within the soul and need to be guarded against with prayer and self-knowledge through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Cure of ours can help us again. He says, do not try to please everybody. Try to please God, the angels, and the saints. They are your public. The temptation to either inflate the ego and follow our own will or desire or to be a people pleaser with celebrity status is ever more prevalent in a social media driven society with a short memory and a thirst for likes and not truth. St. Augustine would consider such false shepherds as ones who feed themselves rather than their flock. How are we to assist priests in their priesthood. The priest who recites at the renewal of promises at the chrism mass, that he is ordained not for self, but for the glory of God, not seeking any gain, but moved only by zeal for souls. How can we assist? Well, St. Jacinta can help us. She was asked to pray for the Holy Father, even though she didn't know who he was. She was filled with love for the Holy Father after she heard about the danger he was in and the responsibility placed on his shoulders. She would offer her sacrifices and sufferings not only for the conversion of sinners, as Our Lady requested, but also for the Holy Father. She would also add three Hail Marys for the Holy Father at the end of each rosary. Cannot we do the same for our priests? for our parish priests, and even for priests we don't know, who are in most need of thy mercy. St. Jacinta loved Jesus, and especially the hidden Jesus in Holy Communion. She kept a prayer card of a chalice and host close to her, and would often kiss it. She desired to receive the hidden Jesus again, as she did from the hands of the Angel of Portugal in 1916. 
she would ask to be near anyone who had received Holy Communion so that she could be close to Jesus. She said, it is the hidden Jesus. I love him so much. If only I could receive him in church. Don't they receive Holy Communion in heaven? If they do, then I will go to Holy Communion every day. If only the angel would go to the hospital to bring me Holy Communion again, how happy I would be. Yet this final desire was denied her. Suffering from bronchial pneumonia and having an open wound in her side, Our Lady visited her and asked her if she wanted to convert more sinners through her suffering. She consented. She was taken to Lisbon for an operation without general anaesthetic. The treatment was agony and she was alone without family or friends. On the 20th of February 1920, a priest heard her confession but refused her Holy Communion in Viaticum. She died alone that night without receiving Holy Communion. She died without Holy Communion that others might receive Holy Communion. As the priest refused, perhaps, or maybe I know, St. Jacinta was to receive Holy Communion again, not from an angel, not in sacramental form, but Jesus himself in heaven. Please pray for your priests. Offer sacrifices and penances for them that others may receive Holy Communion from the hands of a priest and that priests will be defended from all the snares of the enemy. May priests have the humility to ask for prayers from the housebound as well as from parishioners engaged in the same spiritual battle. May priests have the courage to never go away. Our Lady of Fatima, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Jacinto and Saint Francisco and Saint Jacinta, pray for us. Saint Teresa, pray for us. Saint John Vianney, pray for us. Servant of God, Sister Lucia, pray for us. Ave Maria. Pardon prayer. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you. I beg pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love you. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you. I beg pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love you. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you. I beg pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love you. The Angel's Prayer. Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I adore you profoundly, and I offer you the most precious body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ present in all the tabernacles of the world in reparation for the outrageous, sacrilegious, and indifferences by which he is offended, and through the infinite merits of his most sacred heart, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I beg of you the conversion of poor sinners.